welcome to Bamford Rose and another forum chat. In this week's forum chat, I've picked up on a few comments sections on the internet and I've also been asked frequently, what do I think about aftermarket seats in Astons? This is because people are after a copy of the Aston lightweight sports seat, which certainly for holding you securely when you're going round track is a good seat, but maybe for long distance GT cruising, it's not as good as what the comfort seat would be. But seats are incredibly personal and only you will know what seat is right for you and how you use the car. So let's look at uh, what the aftermarket world has to offer and compare it to the Aston lightweight sports seat. So here you join us in an aftermarket seat. Now I'm sat in one of these seats now because 10 years ago we looked at fitting this seat but we decided not to because for several fundamental reasons it didn't pass our quality standards. First thing I don't like about it is how the seat belt sits on the top part of this seat. And then once you've got your seat belt round and you plug it into the buckle, especially if it's a Bang & Olufsen car which reduces width of the cabin where the seat will fit, that buckle is rammed up into the transmission tunnel. Uh, rammed up so much that there's no movement on it at all and it's actually quite difficult to put your hand down and press the release button. Losing the electronic adjustment features is just pants. If you are in a manual, this seat is a complete error state. Let me show you. So now I'm sat in this seat and replicating the position that my hand would be in if this was a manual car. And I'm gonna be sitting there to change gear. Now, as you just watched, because if you're in a manual, what you need to do is change gear, but this whole part of the seat on your tricep muscle is stopping you. It's a complete error state. Now, I actually sat in one of these seats uh, the other week and it was in an auto and I actually quite liked it in the auto. It was a DBS auto that did have Bang & Olufsen. The buckle was compromised, the seat belt was compromised. But for this particular individual, the seat gave a better posture, better position for his back problem. So it worked out for him. And in the auto, it was actually quite good. I sat in it thinking, well, oh, this is quite nice actually. I don't like that I've lost the adjustments. I don't like that I've lost heated seats whether those dislikes are offset by the like of the actual seat and how you sit in it, I, I don't know, I can't comment on that. It will be an individual choice. If you are of a certain frame, as you can see, I'm not of that certain frame. I'm sat in the seat now, my shoulder is within these supporting areas. If you are of a certain frame where your shoulder is outside of that supporting area, it's actually gonna be really uncomfortable because you're not actually gonna be able to put your back into the seat and, and your back is the seat sculpted to support your back. You're sort of gonna be perched on these bits that are sticking out. So my advice there is if you sit in the seat and it sort of feels like an elephant trying to squeeze themselves into a lederhosen, then this seat isn't for you. So let's now review the Aston Martin lightweight seat, and this is fitted in a V12 Vantage. The first thing to note, and as you can see from this zoomed in pic, is that you have the electronic seat adjusters. So we've got the normal base adjuster forwards or backwards, and there you can see the adjuster for the backrest tilt. But on the sport seat, it's not tilting the backrest independent to the base unit of the seat like it is on the conventional comfort seats. On the sport seat, that tilt function is tilting the whole base and upright section as one. Now this is really good because you can get yourself into a really, really nice position um, with tilting the seat base backwards. And this links in with the biggest problem of the aftermarket lightweight seats, is that error state where your gear changing arm clashes with that wing back part of the seat. Because Aston have engineered this perfectly so that it's not actually your tricep that is clashing with that wing back. 
it, for me, a uh, normal 95% person that these uh, seats are designed for, that's much further up and it's almost just a little bit forward of your armpit. But if you've angled the seat nicely, it means that as you put your left arm out to change gear, you can go forwards and backwards on the gear lever and not get impinged by the wing back of the seat whatsoever. Next picture shows the seat belt sitting nicely on the wing back area of the seat. You know, it, it isn't difficult to get the seat belt over and the seat belt doesn't slide down the wing back because it sticks out too far in the aftermarket seat so it doesn't slide down the factory seat whereas that seat belt to upper seat condition on the aftermarket seat is just uncomfortable and it's a bit of a faff to get your hand across and actually get the seat belt over. Next is the seat buckle. Now I said on the aftermarket seat that it's quite wedged in and uh, as you can see there on the sports seat, the buckle is fitting snugly, but it does actually move in between the seat and the carpet and you can easily access it to get your hand in to release it. Next feature you've got on the Aston lightweight sports seat is this glass button on the uh, A-pillar part of the dash trim there, which if you press it, completely moves the seat forwards and tilts it upright, allowing you to get easy access to the back. Obviously, if you fit an aftermarket seat, you've completely no, got no option for that functionality. Uh, not just because there isn't the button and it doesn't work with the software, but it's because the aftermarket seat has lost all of its electronic adjustments completely. Next big difference on the Aston seats is the stitching is quite beautiful. And one of the quality controls Aston get right is its stitching. And you're never gonna get the grade of leather, the grade of stitching, and uh, luxuriate and be happy in the aftermarket seat like you could be uh, when you're sat and looking at the cabin of the Aston sports seat. Now we have fitted as a retro fit for several customers, the Aston lightweight sports seats. And they're about 10 and a half thousand pounds plus fitting costs. I'm not sure exactly what the proper carbon option aftermarket seats retail for. It's probably six or 7,000 pounds by the time you've had it fitted. And if you look at what you get for your money going the factory lightweight seat route, then there's no way I would be going for the aftermarket option. You just lose too much functionality. There are too many error states with it and you definitely get a better quality end result by retrofitting the factory lightweight sports seats. Hope you like that forum chat. As always, it really helps us if you can subscribe to our channel. Click us a like and give us your comments on what we've talked about today. We'll see you on the next forum chat.